What's up guys, this is Nick back with another episode of Virtual Tailgate. Today, we're going back to a recipe that I posted a few weeks ago. Um, this one is the seamless ravioli. I think that it's less work. Um, but what you're gonna get is a more delicate pasta. You're gonna need two to three days in advance, but it's less work. We've got some semolina flour. Basically, we're gonna make our stuffing and we're gonna put it in balls on top of the flour here. It's kind of a bed of semolina flour. You're gonna to wanna to use some kind of refined flour that's gonna coat this thing evenly. And then once we cook it in a couple of days, it's going to encase our stuffing, so to speak, and it's gonna be a great thing. Kind of unusual, thinking outside the box, but we're in quarantine now. We got plenty of time and uh, we're trying new things. In this method where we're mixing flour and, and moist stuffings, you're really gonna want to get scientific. Uh, scientific meaning I'm gonna need 450 grams of ricotta cheese. I know by looking at the lid, it's about 425. If you don't have a scale, you're gonna know that I'm gonna need about 25 grams of, of ricotta cheese more than a container. You can eyeball it that way. But what the, the point of the story is, you need to pull out as much moisture as you can from the stuffing without drying it out as well. But we don't want a loose stuffing because it's all gonna fall apart when we boil it. So what we're doing, we're making this thing, we're gonna cover it in flour, we're gonna put it in the refrigerator, and that's going to pull out uh, as much moisture as you leave it. If you leave it for five days, it's gonna be super dry. If we do it today, it's gonna to be wet and it's gonna fall apart. So, all right, what we're gonna do first, I've got a scale here, and you put it, uh, you set it to grams. Um, and then basically we're just going to zero that out with our container here. And uh, put these in. So like I said, this one container is 425 grams. And, and the point of the measurement is still to basically get your understanding of what's going on. So as long as you know that I need this much and this much, if, if you realize that you have uh, more uh, ricotta maybe than 450 grams, then you'll know that you may have to leave it in the refrigerator longer uh, to dry it out. And also what you're gonna wanna do is play around with these things. I mean, I think you're gonna like the recipe. So next time you do it, maybe, um, you know, you know, do add something else or whatever. Next, we're going to put uh, the zest of lemon inside of the stuffing. And this is to bring some sharpness. Hey, can you, can you chill out over there? Guys, you, you were laying down and sleeping until I started the video. Bayless, go to your bed, to your bed. Excuse me, they're, they're quarantined as well. Uh, we're gonna do the zest of a lemon because if you've ever squeezed the juice out of a lemon, it's really good, but you know the zinc comes from the zest. Not the white pith part, but just that outer, outer part. And it's very good for the coronavirus as well. This will definitely help get over some of those symptoms. You have all kinds of tools. How do I get this zest off? I really like the zester uh, when we're talking about drinks or when you want texture. Um, this is my go-to tool and you basically just peel it on down and you'll see uh, it comes out in strings like so. Um, but what we want um, is less of the texture and more of the flavor. So we'll basically get our microplane. Um, and if any of your parents did woodworking like my dad did, this is definitely a woodworking tool that has now migrated to the kitchen. So what we're gonna do here is it's gonna grate it more or less. Don't want the white uh, pith part there because it's bitter. Thanks, thanks bird. Bird, it's a shadow. It's a shadow. Please. 
Shadow. Um, well, that's Ted, and he's just letting you know that a shadow um, just passed in front of the window over there. But everything should be good as well. He's on the high alert here in the quarantine. Appreciate it, Bird. Okay, so um, we're just going to get the zest off of this thing. Uh, we really don't want the juice out of this lemon because, again, it's going to create more of a moist environment. Uh, so just get as much of that zest off as you can. All right, now with that, uh, we're going to add some basil. All right, now we season it to taste. You know, I generally cover my surface area with salt. Uh, this is fresh ground black pepper. I've got Italian seasoning. Again, we're gonna cover this. Uh, and it, it really it really takes one time to get your preference to see what you wanna do uh, with your seasoning. The first time I made it, I didn't use the granulated garlic. Uh, I'm gonna use it this time and try to add a little bit more sharpness. You really don't want to get chunky here. You don't want to add like meat or anything like that because it's going to render out as you cook it. Um, this is going to be a very stable stuffing. Uh, and for this application, uh, no meat, no fat, and things like that, that we don't know what's coming out. Now, for fat, we will be using egg yolks. It's going to be two large eggs. So we put those in, and we're just going to mix this up. So, we're just going to get a thorough mix. Obviously, you're going to want to get a good distribution of all your ingredients. And you can actually smell it now. This filling, I mean, you can actually use it to stuff manicotti, you know, get you some, some kind of stuffed pasta, get your shells or anything like that. And this will work for you there. We're going to scoop these. You want a small, you know, one and a half to two ounce maximum. You don't want to get too out of hand with this because it's to be manageable. You don't want it to fall apart. Um, and this, this size works really well. And you want them to be even. So kind of level off your scoop. Make sure you don't put it you know, on the edge where it won't be completely covered in the flour and scoop away. Let's cover these guys and more similar to flour. And it's always good to use sort of a sifter to make sure you don't have any lumps in your flour. Uh, and it kind of gives a nice even sprinkling over these guys. Now also what you're going to want to do is flip these in a couple of hours or so once it starts to set up you're going to flip them and that's going to give you a more even surface and it's also going to make sure that everything is nice and coated okay guys we're going to put these in the fridge and we'll see you in a couple of days Taking these out of the refrigerator. They've set nicely. It's got a little bit of give. It's kind of spongy. 
Um, but they're completely covered. There are no wet spots, which means we're going to have a good coat of flour uh, around this filling. And it's going to be sort of like pasta dough. It is, if you break it down, it's almost exactly like pasta dough. But then again, it's totally different. So we have a good thing here. We're all set. What we're going to do, bring up the water to a boil. I've got some salted water rolling to a boil. And you're going to need a slotted spoon of some sort to drop them in and pull them out. It's going to take about one minute once they're in the boil. And what I have here is a slotted fish spatula. A friend of mine, Lindy Sanders, gave me this spatula. It's a fine tool if you will. And we're going to drop them in, pull them out, and then we're going to make our sauce. All right, now we find ourselves in this coronavirus quarantine. How many of you guys took on the challenge of giving up drinking for Lent? So I did, and what I'm going to do for you today, and while we're waiting on this pasta water to boil, is show you a little bit of this non-alcoholic cocktail that I'm going to give myself. What I have is a mango LaCroix. Um, these come in cans. Uh, it's pretty cool. There's all sorts of different flavors, but good luck trying to find a specific one. There's a lot of these coffee ones and a coconut one out there right now. Look, La uh, LaCroix mango was one of the only flavors that I found. So you're going to go ahead, put that in some ice, throw in three grapes. This will give you absolutely no flavor, but you will be able to look at something around in there. Um, and a splash of lime. What that'll do is absolutely nothing for you, but it'll give you those motions like you're going through. And if you ever give up beer or anything like that, go to the carbonated waters. They give you that crispness that you're looking for. Uh, Got to tell you, it's not bad. I'm going to make it through. At this point, currently, I'm about 15 days away. So, be ready and on the lookout for some wine reviews when I return from the wagon. So, the best thing to do is get as many of these raviolis ready to drop at one time. That way, uh, they're not going to overcook and do them in batches. That's what you're looking for right there. Take your raviolis and put some olive oil over there. This will keep everything fluid. The main thing we want to do now is keep these delicate little pillows from sticking while we make our sauce. And don't worry, even these busted ones are going to get eaten. Boom. You could crumble this if you like. We're gonna slice it. We're gonna add some onions. Finely chopped. This is a half, half of a white onion. We got red and yellow peppers. Put some spinach. Now don't worry, this spinach is gonna wilt down. shortly tomatoes and garlic
more delicate than a regular ravioli. Uh, but the flavors that we put in there really shine here and you just get a basic creaminess. But it's not empty because of the way that we seasoned the, the stuffing. You can really taste everything that's going on that we put in there because we didn't smother it down. We didn't cook it to death. We get, let everything shine through. You guys hunker down in the quarantine. I'm really enjoying all of the live performances. Justin McCoy uh, putting that 8 o'clock live performance on every night. A couple other musicians are doing the same thing. We even have Dave Matthews Band. Luke Combs is doing one as well. Lots of people. It's great. Whenever we're faced with adversity, it's good to see that the world comes back and tries to console one another. So do this recipe. It's something crazy. It's something different than you've ever tried before. But come together, share it, enjoy it, live virtually. Remember, every day is game day. How do you learn?